and then we can think and figure out what to do. Yeah, you're able to find a big wrench and kind of <clears throat> jam it in the door so that it sells yeah. shut. Okay. Well, the murderous assholes are still here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you don't sound like Toki. <laughs> hey, I got the god piece too. <laughs> You've seen that episode, haven't you? I, I don't think so. What, what so, is it? I have to look. It's a death clock. Death clock. They go shopping and they all come back with <laughs> with metal god pieces, and Toki comes back with a strip. <laughs> look, I got the god piece too. It's a metal. <laughs> it's good stuff. Oh, this show's hilarious. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, so Bjorn locks you guys in, and he blocks the door from opening with a big wrench. What do you guys want to do? Hey, stop that! Get down! She loves the code. Mm -hmm. Well, we the have to say today. windows or anything, right? The what? You said uh, building four doesn't have any windows. Yeah, the, the, the garage has no windows. It is dark in here now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as your stuff starts to boot back up, like your eye and your arm, your weapons come online, I would assume that <clears throat> like his advanced combat rifle probably has a light on it. So as it boots back up, you slowly get lighting back. What do you guys want to do? Who's the boss? What are we doing? Um, There's still someone here. We need to figure out five. who they are. We should head towards either five or four. Well, you're in four. Uh, we're in four, so we should go to five or seven. Yeah, I agree. Let's go try to figure out where that EMP came from. Okay. So, um... Smith and Wesson knows that it came from the reactor shed, which is five, and you guys get into the reactor shed um, in your best combat stance and yep. form. But once again, you find that there is nobody here. Um, this is this building's a little bit more solid than the other ones. Um, it has a single entrance, a heavy door. Um, Inside is a compact fusion reactor um, a, that has been adapted to, for uh, this this facility. Um, the reactor's fuel, you see that the reactor goes directly to a fuel processor and there's a hose that comes off the fuel processor out the back of the building right into the ice. So this thing's just drawing power right from the snow and uh, it, it probably not ever going to run out. <coughs> um, you see that there is a tool bench along one wall with some makeshift lights. This tool bench looks like it, it was an afterthought. Somebody built this by hand and, and made it themselves. And you see all manners of a manner of crap spread out, tools and soldering kits and all manner of stuff on this workbench. Um, Everybody make an intellect plus recon check. Eleven. Three. Three. One. Is it dark in here? Oh. Uh, no. It's not dark. No. Uh, Lash, what did you get? If it's dark, That's fine. I have to go. Your intellect plus recon? Um, eleven. Okay, so you, you, what'd you get? Huh? What did you get? Three. Okay, you, you, Lash. And what did Smith and Wesson get? Uh, 12. So, Raph, Bjorn, Lash, Dr. Lash, and Smith and Wesson, you see on the floor next to this workbench what you can determine the source of the EMP blast is. And it is burned out. It did not survive its initial detonation. Should it have okay. survived the detonation? Uh, 
Was this like a misfire, or did something just do its job and it's melted down? Smith and Wesson, you can make a intellect plus investigation check with a boon. So roll 3d6 and take the two highest. Intellect plus what? Intellect plus investigation. Okay. <clears throat> Twelve. So you determined that whoever made this, they crafted this uh, half-assed EMP generator, and it was it's tied to the landing pad. Um. It looks like it should have gone off the second that your ship touched down, but it it was delayed and it's not working properly. And it only went off the one time and then burned out its own circuitry in the process. <laughs> you can determine, however, uh, that uh, your ship is damaged and cannot take off. Oh, yeah, trapped. Well, oh shit. <laughs> So yeah, the gravitic lifters in the launch have burned out or fused or whatever from this EMP pulse. Um, this was a trap. Was it supposed to be a lot more violent than this or did it do, it was this pretty much? It did exactly what, well, it did what it was. Spider cat, spider cat. <laughs> it did what it was supposed to do, but it looks like it was supposed to do it Right. Repeatedly, yeah. and it was supposed to do it. Right. You know, right if this, this then that, and instead this happened, and then it waited and waited and waited, and then went off. Right. Well, we got lucky. Well, kind of. You're stuck here now, though. Uh, yeah, but it you know it didn't happen while we were just about to land or anything like that. So that's good. Um. <clears throat> All right. Make an engineering plus education check. Do you have M drive or um, just J drive? I have one. I think I should have one in M drive. Go ahead and make it. I remember taking M drive and J drive. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember, remember that too. Go ahead, go ahead and make a, a M drive plus education check. Okay. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Okay. M drive plus education? Yes. So, 11. You know that the. If you were able to find the air raft, you could salvage the gravitic lifters out of the air raft and repair the gravitic lifters in your launch. Uh. Finding the air raft has become important now. Yes, now we need to do it or else we'll okay. be stuck. Well, so it appears maybe the bad guys are not still here. This was just a trap, not an attack. So we need to continue. As well. we, we need to continue the search, and we got to see what's in the five and four and seven. So seven zero building you haven't been in. You guys kick up or come up to the front, and it is clear that this that the front of this building, it looks like somebody pulled the the screen down, the weather screen, to try and block themselves. But the front of this building has been hit by a laser weapon off of a ship. So, like somebody in a in a trader ship or whatever, turn the turrets on this building and open fire. Um, when you go into the main building, uh, this is like the administration block. Uh, there were you can tell that there was a brief but vicious firefight. Numerous bullet holes in the furniture and chips out of the walls indicate well over a hundred rounds were fired. Uh, most of the casings look like they've been swept up, but there are a few that were missed. Um, you recognize the, the shell casing as being standard um, small arms from Sword World Confederation's weapons. Um, you've seen these, these shells before. Um, and some of the shells look like they came from just generic weapons that you might find common on the frontier like uh, breech loader weapons, things like that. Um, the central dining table has been turned over and used as a barricade and has been riddled with bullet fire, or bullets. A large stain has been cleaned up behind the table. 
Um, in the kitchen and storage area, you find that it is equipped with gadgets and can turn out meals for well over 20 people at once. There is a this machine. Um, a food vendor mat. Uh, better than that, actually. This is a... <laughs> You recognize this as a field utility module. It is a universally hated piece of survival equipment. Um, this thing, you can put in just about anything into this and it will turn out either a porridge or a nutrient bar that has a consistency of like a, a an you know, an energy bar. Um, but it doesn't matter what you put into it. You can, yeah. you can get scrub brass and put it into it. And it'll say, okay, here you go, and you can eat shitty tasting porridge, or you can eat a shitty tasting energy bar. Or filet mignon, so or, you get yeah. a shitty tasting... Yeah, or you put in a filet mignon, and yeah. I mean, it'll be slightly better tasting, but yeah. Um, so this thing is basically good at taking biomatter and turning it into food. Okay. Um, is one of the items in this kitchen. Um, uh, however, there are large stocks of food in the, in the refrigerator. Um, these are uh, some of these items are perishable so some of it like in the this is a large walk-in freezer and there's like you know a half a pig hanging there and uh, so I mean these guys were eating good um, it doesn't look like anybody's been in here to ransack the kitchen though um, you find that there is um, the so off of here are living spaces and bedrooms that are designed to be configured however you want to configure them. And uh, these are untidy but otherwise undisturbed. Um, accommodation rooms, you find a couple of standard accommodation rooms that are small but basic. Um, and you find that there is a uh, tracking beacon in one of these rooms. And you find that this room belonged to the bath elders and their children. And this tracking beacon um, is giving you a signal. Is it a uh, device that reads the location of a tracking beacon, or is it a thing that you put in your clothes that always says? I no, it it is showing you it is tracking Something a else. bead on somebody else. And let me send this to them first. This well, I'll send it to them and then describe what this is. So this beacon, you first look at it and you see this. Now, this is a map of the entire planet. Um, and you're able to narrow it down and it brings this up. This is where you are, over here at the yeah. down port. This is where the signal is coming from. And, whoops, uh, that's not what I wanted. Um, each of these hexes is 50 kilometers. Of, of heavy snow and wind and ice. Um, now, the ATV, this is all uh, semi-chunky icy ocean. Um, you don't want to take an ATV out in the ocean. However, in these shallows areas, you could theoretically drive the ATV through. It is buoyant. Okay. Well... Looks like we'll need to see who took the raft, because we need the raft back. But before we look, go, let's find out who is dead and in the pit. Okay. So, will you... The raft is just sitting here trying to figure out what, who set the trap. Mm -hmm. They came in here, they wanted weapons, they wanted data, they didn't want food. They didn't want any kind of, like, this wasn't over that kind of resource sort of thing. Someone went to all the effort of sweeping up bullet casings and mopping up you do find blood. One, you do find one more thing in the accommodation or in the uh, main chamber of the accommodation block. <clears throat> you find one of the data cores that was pulled from the communication. Oh, well, 
We need to figure out what's yeah. on that. I, I have a hand computer. We could try to see what's on it to read it. Well, Dr. Lash seems like he's your computer expert. Yep. Does Lash want to try to hack into this computer core? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and make a education plus computer check. Uh, 14. Okay. So, out of 14, Cheers. you find, wow. let me see here. Oh, no kitty. That's not, no kitty. No pepperonis. Nah, he didn't even lick it. Or she yeah. didn't lick it. She just smelled <laughs> She's it. She's just like, wait, no, that's not that. Pork is not my thing. Hey, meow, Marzu. Getting your whiskers all over everything. No, no kitty. No licking. So on this, on this, in, uh, this computer core, you find that there is a log from the um, from the Downport Warden, uh, who he suspects that the passenger that was dropped off the one by the the G ship, whatever. No, by the Iataka oh, Wasab. Pizza. Oh, that's hey. a Nicky cat. Hey. No, Nicky. No. I couldn't see. <laughs> the Iataka Wasab was a third Imperium intelligence officer. So, an Imperium intelligence officer was dropped off here. Got was off. dropped off. And in following that was a family of four. Right. Of researchers. Correct. And they were dropped off by the subsidized merchant, the Jeffrey. Now, I heard in the in the beginning when he was looking around with a drone that there was a body somewhere. How many bodies have we found? You haven't found any bodies. So when you investigate the pit, um, you find there's not one body. You find three burned bodies at the bottom of the pit. So the pit is what eight? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's um, where you went with the the drone. drone. Okay. There are three burned bodies along with clothing and personal identification in the pit. They were doused pretty thoroughly before being burned and, the, and any identification is impossible. They're crispy critters. So I could do a bio scan of them, but I have nothing to compare it to. Right. Uh, none of the data that we got <laughs> you, off of the... You could put them into the DNA database once you get to another planet. Right. But It's too late. Then. Right. Uh, what about gender and age or just size? No uh, general size shows that these are three adults. Three adults. Okay. All right. And everything was burned too much. I can't tell. Okay. And the beacon is showing that you, if you wanted to follow the beacon, you yeah. got a long ways to go. Okay. Uh, well, Dr. Lash. I wonder if they're the type of parents that would put trackers on their own kids. <laughs> yeah. Keep track of them. Is that where the kids went? Yeah, the, in the back of their neck, like they're a dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you land the ship remotely? No. That's not capable. That's not a possibility with uh, the subsidized merchant. I mean, you could do, you know, in the future, now you might want to consider doing some upgrades to the bridge that would make that possible, but. Well, we have no choice. We have to go and get the the raft. So, I'm just going to load that plane up with food. Shall, yeah, shall we ride in style? We got we got to be ready with food because uh, like the swap box. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. You don't have to pack more than that. Oh, you mean the <laughs> <laughs> you the FUM? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'd rather take that half of I'm hungry here. Just need a tree a branch into it. That'll, that'll tide you over. Well, I mean, thing. whatever. There's not an infinite amount and of like a, a Like a tree branch and a Wendy's packet of salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, much, how much room is there for passengers? So in the Sword World ATV. And this was a modified one that had uh, eternal power plant 
buried in it. So it will. It is a crew of two and can carry two additional passengers. However, it has a. Has a cargo compartment that can carry a half a ton. So, I mean, there's plenty of space for you guys. <laughs> it's just our, there's only four chairs. Right. Well, the rest of us are just going to have to squat in a I'm cargo. cold yeah. cargo space. Yeah, yeah. I'm not driving. I'm wrap right I on top, mean. tank girl style. You <laughs> could, yeah. In fact, so the back of this thing has um, a, a ledge that goes around the edge, and on the top is a rail. So you could hang on to the side of this riot I, that's not going to be a very comfortable ride it's plowing cold. through the snow it's cold and yeah. rough um how cold is it uh, that's a good question let's see who's driving that would be was it me or uh smith and wesson i do hover things that has grab real, vehicles real vehicles yeah either one of us oh yes so it is listed as very cold uh, very cold means temperatures in the negative 20 to negative 40 degrees Celsius range, averaging around negative 30 degrees Celsius. Alaskan winters, then. It's a little too, too cold for all that, uh, for much snowfall, um, but a storm could blow in from elsewhere. Well, well Smith and Wesson should drive because I have to watch the food. Make sure we have enough food. <laughs> it is coastal, so I imagine it's probably windy too. It is. It it, it can uh, like when you it's died down a bit since you've landed, but you know that these storms can come in really quick. I'll uh, I'll have my drone fly overhead and get an aerial view, and if I see a storm coming in, I'll retract the drone back into the. Okay. So we can. Have an eye in the sky and see further away. Okay. I wish we had room for the skis. <laughs> yeah, but they were cracked. So. Well, we could fix them. <laughs> <laughs> they were made out of plastic resin. Just cut them in some super glue. You're probably fine. I think uh, the food processor could be used to fill the gaps. Beautiful. Put some food in there. <laughs> So, uh, the three-week journey begins. <laughs> right. Uh, so you guys take off. Uh, Smith and Wesson make a uh, dexterity plus drive wheeled check. Seven. All right. So that's not good. We crash. We're all dead. All <laughs> <laughs> new character. We have to wait for another ship to land. Terrain feature. So he's driving you guys through the snow, and uh, you're on course, but. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a warm water geyser comes shooting up out of, through a crack in the ice and kind of tips the ATV. Everybody make uh, dexterity checks. Ooh, 12. Rocking. Rocking Ten. these rolls today, man. Eight. They're not weighted dice. Nine. Okay. Uh, La Mr. Lash, or Dr. Lash, what'd you get? Eight. Nice. Like um, Smith and Wesson make another uh, Dex plus drive wheeled check. Uh, twelve. That's much better. You so he keeps the ATV from tipping over entirely, um, and he's able to get it back on track. Um, uh, you're on your road, and you can just see that. This geyser is shooting up out of this crack, and it's warm water. And as it's coming, as it falls back down, it comes down as snow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Bjorn, make a electronic sensors check plus your education. That's a oh yeah. Uh, Sixteen. 
you are picking up uh, that there there is some kind of metallic wreck in the snow up ahead. Slow down. We have a wreck ahead of us. The drone is picking up large amounts of metal. Um, as you come up, uh, you're along the shoreline, and you can see that there is a wrecked tracked ATV that is one of the one of the tracks is like completely blown off the wheels, um, and it it is half buried in snow. Um, you immediately notice as you get closer, uh, all the doors are open, and there are containers that are strewn around. It looks like this thing's been stripped. Okay. Um. How far out are we now? Not very far. Maybe you, to the green area around the... You, you find, you run into that around oh, here. okay. That's farther than I expected. <clears throat> yeah, you guys... You, it's been you, day three or something. Of course, I don't know how fast these things go. As you guys are traveling, uh, now here's a question. Are you guys going to travel day and night switching off drivers? Because that could be really tough. Um, Not for me. I'm sleeping <laughs> in the car the whole time. I don't know what you could do. Well, it's still a rough ride. Yeah. Um, we want to stop the moving and the shaking eventually if we all want to get some want actual rest. Do a rest. camp for the night? I like do, yeah four-hour potty breaks or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys... We're pushing. You're pushing, but you're not... Not 24-7. Not doing 24-7, okay. So you guys stop for a, a food and nap break, and... Everybody make a recon check, plus intellect. What'd you get? Six. Ten. Okay. Uh, Dr. Lash, what'd you get? Five. Oh, boy. And Smith and Wesson, what'd you get? Uh, what was the roll for? Uh, intellect plus recon? Ten. Okay. <laughs> so those of you that made it, As you guys are sitting around your camp, one of these. Oh, he's cute. Oh, oh my lizard. god, what is that? A little ice lizard. So one of these comes up and starts stealing like silverware or anything and runs off with it. Uh, you recognize these, uh, being a sword worlder yourself, you recognize these as being calamanders. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they like to, they're, you know that, you don't know a whole lot about them, but you know that they're native to Mithril. Um, they like to steal uh, stuff and run off with it. Um, not intelligent. They're not intelligent. They're just annoying little lizard, ice lizard creatures. <laughs> However, um, Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, five. Dr. Lash, um, you're sitting there on a crate and all of a sudden you feel like, like you've got a barbed fish hook jammed into your neck. That doesn't sound pleasant. No, it's extremely painful. Um, Role you, play, say Al. <laughs> you reach up and you kind of pinch and pull a, this thing out. And it looks like this. Except it's tiny, like it a flea. Like a holy, holy. 
but it's <laughs> the size of a tongue. <laughs> That's <is> adorable. <laughs> this Absolutely. thing's so cute. So he pulls this out. Ah. And it's, you know, small like this. Um, initially, these things are white. These are crystal lice. And they burrow in and suck your blood. And as they suck your blood, they turn red. Oh. Um, Sealing up the vac suit. <laughs> <laughs> and about that time, that's when you realize that there are multiple types of calamanders. Um, okay. So there are calamander males. There are calamander females. <laughs> And then there's trunk people. <laughs> uh, there's a calamander protector, which is larger and quite uh, violent. Um, the calamander protector, two of them are approaching your camp, hissing at you. Oh, crap. Everybody can roll initiative. So the way initiative works, it is as equally good to be fast of, di of reflexes as it is to be quick of mind. So you can add your choice, either your intellect DM or your dexterity DM. So I could choose between one or one. Right? Well, yeah. Either one? Either one. So I've got 10 for Fenris. All right, I think it's time to put this die in time out. It's rolled four ones in a row so far. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Goose, what'd you get? Nine. That's much better. Uh, Graph. Five. Venerous got a ten. And Bjorn? Seven. Seven. Smith and Wesson. So what do I roll for initiative? So I roll 2d6, and you can either add your intellect modifier or your dexterity modifier, your choice. Um, okay, 10. Okay. And Dr. Lash. 8. Okay. All right. Where did... Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, Fenris. So between Fenris and uh, Smith and Wesson, which one of you wants to go first? Me. Uh, you can go first. All right, okay. Fenris. So you see these two calamanders coming towards you. What do you want to do? To the wreckage. Don't draw them to our vehicle. They are 12 meters away. I can shoot them. All right. Go ahead and make your shot. They are not trying to hide or dodge in any way. So I'm sure they're trying to like intimidate us away. Right? Yeah, right. They're hissing and. I'm not going to aim at them though. What? Like I'm just gonna try to shoot near them as a warning shot. Scare them off. With okay. Them. Go ahead. Make, scare them off. Go ahead and make a dexterity plus gun combat energy. So I got what two so plus four. Uh, that's twelve. Okay. So you fire off your laser and it hits the. <clears throat> ground near them. I don't know that these guys are smart enough to be scared. Uh. One of them halts and stops. At the one that you fired near um, stops and is is hissing at you. The other one continues to move forward. Um, did you want to do anything with your minor action? Did you want to move? or Take cover in the wreckage. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Just, wait, no, I'm going to aim. Okay, now so I'm you can to... aim and, and that will apply to your next turn. Okay, Smith and Wesson, what would you like to do? How far away are they? 12 meters. 12 meters. So, can I... Can I aim and then, like... Are there, like, re, uh, reactions in this or not? Yes, you can perform as many reactions as you want. For uh, each reaction that you perform, 
um, it will mean that uh, you have a negative to your next turn. So if you only do one reaction, like dodging, then that means you have minus one to your attack next turn. If you dodge and then uh, dive for cover, then you would have a minus two. So, so what if I, um, can I like prepare an action? You could. What do you? So for your minor action, you could like aim, which will give you a plus one to your attack. Um, do you want to basically hold your action? Yeah, I want to hold my action basically. And then, so were you readying it or just waiting for something to happen? What do you want to do? Readying it. Okay. And until they're within like range. Okay. So they. I mean. What are you, f I mean, they're only 12 meters away. I would think that, what weapon are you shooting? A revolver. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's got like, what, a range of five meters or something like that? 10 meters. 10 meters, okay. So you're gonna wait until they move forward. Mm -hmm. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Carlos Goose Gessick, what do you wanna do? Shoot them. All right. I wanna aim and shoot the one that's holding still. Okay. There you go. Seven. All right, well, that's a hit, and you can add plus one to your damage. Okay. Eleven. Eleven. He's not dead, but he is not feeling well at all. Um, I mean, you didn't turn him into a lingering red mist or anything, but he is bleeding profusely. Um, How many shots can you take in a round? Just the one. I mean, you could if you had a if you had it, let's say that you had a pistol in each hand, mm -hmm. you could fire and then be at a minus two for the offhand. Gotcha. All right. Dr. Lash, what would you like to do? I'm just gonna casually get up and go behind um, Smith. Okay. So you can do that with your minor action. Did you want to f fire on them? With what? Oh, do you, do you not have a gun? No. Okay. <laughs> Use your son that, and see that seems like it. That seems like an oversight. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll try making something when he's the brain. When we get back. Yeah. That's what he hired other people for. Yeah. To be the guns. That's true. So you go and you hide behind uh, uh, Smith and Wesson. The Calamanders. So it's just casually walk behind. <laughs> he's, he's too okay, smart to be afraid. He's like, little oh. with it. Okay. It's just little animals. The it's just little animals. <laughs> the injured calamander moves forward six meters. So, uh, Smith and Wesson, you can make a shot. Okay. So what would it be to hit? You like, need to get. What would I roll? You need to roll two d six, add your dexterity DM, and your gun combat slug level. Six. Wow, you missed. Not by a lot, but but you missed. Um. That's all that. Calamander is going to do. The other Calamander uses three minor actions and bolts right up to Goose. Oh, no. Bjorn, what do you want to do? Oh, oh crap. I keep telling you, I am the cook. I am the cook. I'll pull out. It looks like you're going to be eating fresh lizard. I've, I've got these, these guys are right melee range for my co. Yeah, my shipmate. So I'll uh, pull my axe off of the, my back. Okay. Are you sure it's an axe and not a cleaver? Like I should. <laughs> yeah, it's just a big meat cleaver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, it's probably the stupid. Well, I should pull something else, but got the axe. Oh, 12 on the dice. Oh, yeah. Doesn't that, matter what else I have. Bonus. That hits the Calamander, and you can add and 4 to your damage. Add 4 to my damage. Okay. 
four. So the axe does three D plus two. And so three D six plus two plus four. So six plus whatever I roll. Nineteen, and it says AP eight comma smasher. Oof. Whatever that is. This axe is a freak. It's a static axe. It's an electric. Yeah. So smasher means that it'll bash through armor, but it says AP eight. Um, yeah, so it'll cut, as a static axe, it will cut through, like, combat armor. Um, like, his cloth armor, I don't think, it, it would just... It ignores it. It would ignore it completely. Uh, so how much damage? 19. Jesus. So, <coughs> Goose doesn't have to worry about it, <coughs> because Bjorn comes over and goes, shunk, and cuts this thing in half. Yeah. And you've got, like, squirming Calamander bleeding all over the snow. <coughs> There's one left that is already injured. Raph, what would you like to do? Draw my weapon as a small action and shoot it as a big action. Okay, go for it. So it's dexterity mod plus your gun combat energy. Seven. Go! Oh. Missed. Uh, but by only by one. So it is an average failure. Um, yeah, her laser goes into the snow and you just see a little puff of snow come up from the snow. Uh, Fenris. So I aimed last turn. Right, so you have a plus one to your attack. Okay, so I'm going to like shoot the other injured lizard. Okay. Yes. So that is a total of how many dice do you roll? Two. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. Yeah, okay. Um, roll damage. And let's see here. Which Add seven to your damage. Oh, wow. And this is a critical hit. Okay. Yeah. So that it's Anything, yeah. Anytime you get an effect of six or more over over the target, the target for in this case would, would be average eight. So anything that's six or more is considered an exceptional success. So that's a plus ten to damage. I'm pretty sure I kill it because that's ten. So twenty. Yeah. It, six. Twenty. It, it only had three. <laughs> so yeah, your laser carbine just <laughs> pace it into red vapor. Um, but you still got two halves. So if. If Bjorn wants to cook up some some calamander, he can. Oh. Uh, yes. This is not prepared right. It would be contaminated. <laughs> you need to not penetrate the bowels of the monsters. That's a good time. point. Yeah, that is a good point. <laughs> this meat tastes like shit. <laughs> we can put it in the food processor though, so I shall make some 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 granola bars. <laughs> <laughs> Lizard bars. Uh, uh, <laughs> the worst beef jerky I've ever eaten. In my <laughs> so around the campsite where you guys are at, um, so this light green stuff here, this foliage is like there is like a thorny, uh, a thorny brush lowland brush plant that grows up through the, the snow and ice uh, that grows through here and uh, you realize that this stuff can grow pretty thick um, if you were to run into like a wall of this stuff the ATV would actually have trouble getting through it oh. um, but the, where you're camped at you're at the edge of what looks like a, a small forest of this stuff uh, along the uh, the ocean ledge um, and after your four hours you you have some really bad calamander uh, jerky, jerky st sticks and move on did the uh, water cano come from the land area or yeah. were we over the okay no it came it came from a, a fissure in the ice okay um, Everybody make a 
Intellect recon check. Oh, crap. Three. See, I, I don't roll good every time. <laughs> Thirteen. So, what'd you get? Three. Oh, I've got three. Five. Thirteen. Seven. Four. And what about uh, Smith and Wesson? Eleven. Okay. So Smith and Wesson and Raph, you, um, as the the truck's bouncing around and, and the plow is kind of creating a path for you, in the, uh, about, mm, about 24 meters off in the distance, you see um, what looks like a man-made wall that's partially buried by the snow, but these rocks, nobody stacks rocks like that. <laughs> nobody stacks books like this. Mm. But there there are rocks that have been stacked in, in like a wall, and then you can see behind it, there's some kind of trapezoidal type building uh, made of stone in the distance. Well, where are we now looking at that? Oh, we made it to the river. Yeah, you've made it to this river. Okay. And this building is like just on the other side of the river. The ATV has no problem crossing the river, or, or technically. Yeah. Uh, Smith and Wesson make a dexterity plus drive wheel to check. Smith and Wesson? Uh, yeah, I'll try driving over it. Okay. So make a uh, dexterity plus drive wheeled check. A. Okay. Yeah. No problem. You were able to cross the river, and then the question is: So are 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 you guys going to point it out to, or are you going to turn towards this this man-made wall, or are you just going to ignore it and keep going? Um, it's time for our four I hour think break. we should see what it's about. Okay, so you turn. Um, yeah. Are we following any kind of? Sorry, we got the beacon. Any kind of path? Yeah, he's got a beacon, but yeah. other than that, are there's we, not really any road. It's like yeah, driving we're across. Kind of forging our own way here. Right. Okay. Yeah, and where the where the snow gets too deep, uh, Smith one just hits the lever and drops the snow plow and just kind of plows it out of the way. Mm. Um, so you get closer to this, um, a strangely regular rock surface nearby turns out uh, to be a wall. Um, it looks like it was part originally part of a or a, a octangular building uh, with two stories above ground and below. Um, as you guys get out of your the ATV and look at this, it looks like the second story has collapsed. Um, Everybody can make a an intellect plus investigation check. Ten. Fourteen. Nice. Investigation. I don't think. And the two cops are on top of it. You have no ranks in investigation. You take a minus three. Minus three. And it is an intellect intel intellect as well, right? Yep. So I have one. Wow. Okay. Um, I notice absolutely. You're nothing. like, hey, there's a lot of snow. <laughs> you guys notice there's a lot. Of there's snow a lot here? of snow. Um, oh my god, <clears throat> I saw the funniest thing. So because of the, the we're gonna go back to this because it's never gonna stop being funny because it's just getting deeper and deeper. There's two things about the ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal. First of all, <laughs> yeah. the Egyptian authorities impounded it and are holding it for something like 900 Almost million, million dollars. Yeah, 900 million dollars for the Japanese company that owns it yeah. because you yeah. held up traffic. It's like, oh, come on, 900 million, please. The second part is even funnier. This summer when you're doing gardening, shit's gonna hit the fan. 
there's a gnome shortage because evidently there was a whole shit ton of inventory for garden gnomes. <laughs> I'm not making this up. There was a whole news article on CNN, gnome shortage, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought it was an onion article. Oh I'm serious. Yeah. I thought it was the onion. Nope. It was it was for real. The most worthless ship right. cargo. <laughs> nine hundred <laughs> nine hundred million dollars <laughs> for the garden. The gnomes. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, and so this ship is the cargo on this thing is just case after case after case. Of no. 20,000 containers of garden. I don't know if it's all of the well, ship, I mean, but I mean, they're funny. saying that there's going to be like a shortage of garden gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> because they got stuck in the <laughs> so they're, they're going, the ship is worth uh, 60 million dollars. Oh, it's real like <laughs> Firefly. Yeah, you remember that last cargo you did where they were just the little dolls with the bobbly heads? People loved those! <laughs> <laughs> Exactly was the take on the wobbly headed doll caper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ridiculous. Yes. But the headline is what gnome shortage. <laughs> Lost it. Yeah. Because that's funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, so. No, I would name. use 60 point font on five print newspaper. Oh, totally. No, no. shorty. <laughs> <laughs> extra, extra. World ends. Uh, Dr. Lash and Smith and Wesson, what did you get on your investigation? Uh, 11. Okay. Now, what about Lash? Japanese should just download and have a little protest of Nice. So, Dr. Lash, Raf. Uh, Smith and Wesson and Bjorn, um, you poke around in this uh, building. Um, Fenris is like, "Hey, do you guys realize the top floor collapsed? <laughs> like I'm on top of things. I don't want to go inside um, this building. It's unstable, and we need grav lifters. So there's little above waist height left in the middle story." Uh, but you four find that there is a uh, metal trap door that is closed, it's but it's not locked in any way. Oh, all right. Uh, and uh, no footprints in the snow with, that are like 16 inches in diameter with claws? No. Okay. Well, then we open it. Okay. Um, Raph will be right there with her laser pistol. That's a it. very specific wondering. Hey, <laughs> 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 okay. okay. right, hold on, Did you have you read this before? Uh, <laughs> you you first. lift up this um, this door, and there is a stone stair st uh, set that goes pretty steep under this building. Um. You find that it, the underground segment is intact. There's no water or there's no lights, but you find that there are storage tanks uh, that are full of water, fresh water. Um, you find some decayed shipping crates that once held emergency rations and other supplies. And gnomes. And probably gnomes. Um, gnomes from that ship become infinitely valuable in the far future just for their... their Everybody can make an intellect check. Oh, good. <laughs> now you're saying that there's, you know, there's water Two. down there? So there's fresh water and there's there's old decayed containers that used to hold emergency <clears throat> rations. They probably still do. I wouldn't recommend eating. They are well, I'm, full. I'm thinking that uh, this planet is frozen, so there must be a source of power to keep the things above freezing, even though it's underground. Well, that's a good point. That's not listed out in here. Yeah. Okay, anyway. There's freezer burn. Yeah. Uh, so, what'd you get? 11. And? 7. 2. 12. Uh, Dr. Lash and Smith and Wesson. 11. 6. Believe it or not, all of you got it. So, all of you. Um, not me. I get it. I had two. Yeah, two didn't get it. You're okay. you're you're still like, hey guys, this water's wet. Um, <laughs> no, it isn't though. It isn't. Yeah. He goes uh, he goes over, gets a little on his paw, and he's like, oh, he starts shaking her. <laughs> um, uh, you remember hearing that there was many years ago 
that there were these prefab uh, octagonal emergency shelters that could be set up on a planet uh, for basically making a makeshift uh, landing pad. You're not seeing that there's any uh, sign that there, were, that there was ever a landing pad here, um, but it looks like this was, um, it looks like this was set up to assist stranded starfarers. Okay. But you're not, as far as why it's here, you don't know. But you find fresh water. Do, um, are we worried about fresh water? I mean, with snow everywhere. Yeah, and probably not. Power plant, I figure we got all the water we want. Yeah, you're, you're probably okay with that. Um, then you pile back into the urban assault vehicle. Um, the Mormon assault vehicle? The Mormon assault vehicle. <laughs> um, that's a big black SUV. Um, uh, Smith and Wesson, go ahead and make another uh, dexterity plus drive wheel check. Uh, 13. Huh. Yeah. You guys make some really good progress. Days drift by. <laughs> After a couple more days of traveling, you start to your your radio and your truck starts to crackle, and you can pick up the broken signal coming from somebody. Who's doing comms? I have zero. I have one. All right. Go ahead. So, uh, Goose, go ahead and make oh, a intellect. education. Oh. Education plus electronics comes. Uh, eight. Okay. So you're you're able to uh, as you get closer, you're able to adjust the gain, and you pick up a communication from. Where are they? Where did they go? You pick up a communication from Eric Barfield. Hmm? Oh, I am so glad to hear from you. Uh, we have been trapped out here since those two morons took off with the air raft. Oh, oh shoot. Um, he says, uh, my family and I are trapped out here. We have no way of getting back. And uh, we would very much appreciate any help that you could give us. Uh, no. We're full to the brim right now. <laughs> uh, we get the raft. We there, can, there's we'll, no room for you. <laughs> Still there. Pull up. Yep. Pull up. Uh, we need to get the raft so that we can have our <laughs> ship and then we can... There's no... There's no patriotism for fellow Swedes? <laughs> well, you know, this is I so small. This is like paradise for the Swede. <laughs> um, nice vacation. Yeah, he lets you know that they are running low on food. Um, oh, they've been plenty. rationing food, and they have no way of getting back. Um, so, are you gonna? Are you relaying what he's saying? Or yeah, I just hand the calm over. I we don't have a to. salamander jerky. It goes well <laughs> with water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do next? Recommend a fire? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he, some ice on it. <laughs> he says, um, "Well, we would if you could resupply us with some food. We would we would very much like to stay. Uh, we are exploring uh, the possible Aslan ruins here." Uh, well. You are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what well, is fascinating? But something happened back on the base, and the base is destroyed, and we have no ship to get off of the planet unless we get the air raft. So, you, you uh, approach his camp. His camp. Uh, there is a small cliff face. And it is surrounded, the, the opening to this camp is surrounded by these uh, short, sh uh, thorny shrubs. And um, Eric Bothelder comes out Where to greet you. Where's your kids? 
<laughs> oh, you're going to meet the kids. Yeah, we need to find out what happened to the raft. That's what we well, care about. Why'd we stop? To find out from them what where, which well, they're they're they're, they're right. going to die without supplies. Well, so. well, you know, we don't want to die. Well, yeah, it's not our problem. They're hardy people. They would not be dying so easy. <laughs> not of cold. Cool. I don't care if you guys don't want to help them. I will. If we help, then we want so to this is Eric Bothilder. And he takes you into Father, the... Father, what brings you here? He, he, he takes you in and introduces you to his wife. And which one is his wife? You gotta be careful to not pick one of the kids. Because that would be awkward. Yeah. This is his wife, Mintel. Mm. And she's she's rough looking. <laughs> <laughs> she she looks like she's gonna bash you with a shield. And he introduces you to his children, Runa. Which one is Runa? Sweet or a hard. Oh, this is Tegino. <laughs> <laughs> you look swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and his daughter Runa. And uh, Runa is is about fourteen years old, and Agino is about eleven. And uh, um, he, ba Eric, basically tells uh, Runa to kind of show you guys around the camp, and she point she this kid's way too smart. Uh, she's pointing out these drawings on the walls, this cave art, and uh, explaining to you that that there there's a theory that somehow. All the way out here on Mithril, there was an Aslan colony. I don't leave the car. You what? I don't leave the car. You know what I mean? You're like, ah, oh, fuck this. <laughs> um, um, and she's explaining that some at some point in the past, somehow there was an Aslan colony. Now, Aslan are seven foot tall cats. Right. Um, that, as far as you know, are way they're, many they're light years off. Um, and somehow on Mithril there was this ancient colony of the Aslan. Nobody knows how they got here, and so uh, that's what her father is is uh, exploring. Okay. Um, he tells you that they knew that something was going on back at the at the downport, and he tells you that the air raft received a communication, and that they were brought out here by. Uh, Two people, um, and I have their names. Uh, they were brought out ha here by Katrin and Eagle, Eagle Tanderson and uh, Katrin Gierowitz. And um, Eagle decided to, uh, as soon as they learned that something was going on back at the downport, Insisted that everybody pack up immediately and leave. In fact, they didn't. He didn't want to pack up. He just said, "Get in the get in the air raft. We're leaving." And um, Eric got pissed off and punched him. And Eagle took off. Um, Eagle and Katrine took off. And so now the family is trapped here. They have no way of getting back to the downport. Um, they so wait, is this still at the octagonal shaped thing, or we, we went? No, you went. Side? You went further. You okay. are now over here. We're at BFB. At the, okay. At the same. Yeah, you're on the way on the other side. Uh, and so that was the beacon. That was the beacon. Was then. Okay. Yes. And um, crap. Yeah. Sit and in the air raft. No and he, he he tells you well, he he shows you on the map that uh, they took off in this direction heading towards um, the downport, but you didn't see them. Well, it's a big world. I mean, each one of those hexes is 50 kilometers. Right. Yeah, you didn't know to look for it either, so. And the wreckage we found was of a, uh, a tracked vehicle. Yeah, right. And it, it had been wrecked for quite some time. Well, they can't stay here because and we can't transport them inside the vehicle, so I suggest that. Well, I mean, you could. I mean, point five tons of cargo space. That's that's a thousand pounds. Yeah. I mean, we For each weigh two hundred and fifty a person. So there's four of you in the cabin, and the two of you are riding in the cargo compartment. You could probably fit another four people in there. Especially if two of them are kids. That's what. Yeah. yeah like 
put the kids. Well, we all huddled together food, for warmth. That's for sure. Processor. Well, and they haven't eaten in a couple, uh, eaten yeah, decent we, we food can, in a couple weeks, so they're kind of thin. We'll help them with the food. What I'm wondering is if they have enough at the camp to make a, a sled that we can pull behind, so we can offload Ooh. some of the stuff that we're carrying. We'll be traveling slower, but at least we don't have to abandon them, and we can get so the they were get back. At the beacon, though, right? They are, yeah, they were at the beacon. So, so we need to take the. Did we get the grav from the? No, we the the. Uh, the thing that we wanted wasn't these people; it was the air raft. So, in and your it's gone. in your um, ATV, there are a couple of these. They're they're um, like emergency kits um, for cold weather, um, but there's only like two of these. Yeah. Hmm. And just saying that you you well, have some emergency equipment, but you've you also said got the food. kids were real thin. Yeah, the whole family's thing. Will they fit in that food processor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, yeah. The, the fit, the it kids probably tastes better. The kids will. Yeah. Better than the. No, we're not going to even be eating humans. <laughs> tastes like long pig. Okay. So, we. I don't know what they have at this camp. They have something. I mean, they've been living in something. So. Right. Yeah, they, they, they are basically. They've got a couple of. Uh, tent shelter set up, but then they also have this natural cavern oh, okay. that they're 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 living amongst these ruins or these cave art that they've been studying. They're idiots. Mm -hmm. They were gonna die out here because they had got anything. Going. Essentially, yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. They were four to look a little grim. Yeah. They, yeah. Things are just going from. You know, not so great to, oh, this is bad to, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, things have gotten as bad as they could possibly be they at this point. They took their whole family out here. Well, you know, the only thing I can say is thank you for cleaning up the Swedish gene pool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you people are idiots. <laughs> um, so... We need a base camp of some sort to be out on the planet with no food and he no he does take you guys over to he's got a, a small portable computer workstation and he's able to uh, track and tell you roundabouts where the where the air raft currently is the air raft didn't make it very far it made it maybe halfway back to the to the downport and now is it moving at all oh he, ha he can tell where the air raft is. Yes. Oh, well, we lash everything that we can to the top of the this thing so we can make as much room inside for people okay. as we can. And like uh, the people from the Ozarks, we start heading off. Kitty. Kitty. Yeah. The Velcro cat. Freak. <laughs> um, what's really funny is when she climbs back well, here. Well, I think she snagged that time. Yeah, she did. Oh, boo. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. Okay. We strap Granny on the rocking chair to the top of the truck. Yes. And head to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Off to Beverly Hills we go. Okay. You guys uh, follow this, and you soon see um, in the distance, uh, you can see that there is smoke coming up. And... As you get closer, you can see that there is a downed air raft. Um, and you can see Egil and Katrine sitting there. Egil has a shotgun, and both of them are looking left and right. Threats. Everybody make an intellect plus recon check. Yeah. <laughs> so they've been here for weeks, right? Ten. Yeah, a while. And smoke is still coming out of this thing, yeah. so either the uh, fusion plant is in deep, deep trouble. Um, eight. Eight. Eleven. Eight. Four. Ten. Eleven. Uh, Smith and Wesson. Four. And Dr. Lash. Plus what? Intellect plus recon. Oh. <laughs> Twelve. So everybody who got eight or better, out of the corner of your eye, 
you can see something moving under the snow. Uh-oh. Um, and you can see like the snow kind of displacing itself. displace itself under like something moving rather quickly under the snow, and it seems to circle around this area and then move off. And then it, as the as the ATV like causes vibrations in the ground, it starts to get closer again and then moves off again. And you guys stop, and Egil. Sharks. It's a graboid. Egil is injured. Um, he he got injured pretty bad in the crash. Um, and Katrine comes up, and uh, um, so she tells you um, that they tried to rush back to help uh, the people at the base, and she says um, that she is sure. Let's see if his name is on here. Damn it. These are all goopy. Stupid allergies. Um, she says... Yeah, he has either fractured or badly bruised ribs. It hurts for him to breathe, let alone move, and on top of his hunger, uh, cold, and the knowledge that the crash was his own stupid fault. Um... I got a little something taking my hand off the page. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Katrina. Did you ever see the movie Major Pain? Oh, I've seen it. Oh, yeah. You want something to take you? Katrine tells you that the reason they were rushing back to the downpour is because the visitor that was dropped off was she is positive was some kind of intelligence officer or maybe a courier, but he had no manners and he kept coming on to her. Mm. And she says, to be well honest, if he wouldn't have been so forward, I probably would have been okay with it. But, but instead, I'm stuck with the gill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so this is the imperial guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, how do you guys want to handle this? Do you want to, does Does Dr. Lash want to try to patch up a Well, I don't have what they call the social skills. So, do we have a toolkit? <laughs> you do have a tool. I just want to walk over and start looking at their sled. Okay, so, okay, make a mechanic. Do you have mechanic or engineering? Yeah, mechanic is zero. Go ahead and make a uh, education plus mechanics check. All right, ten. You're able to determine. Raffle stand over his shoulder and go. <laughs> yeah, that looks like it might still be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. One. What about behind that one? You two are able to determine that the gravitic lifters in the gra- in the air raft are still good. You could take these out, replace the ones in your launch, and take off. With all, right. all of our new And friends. then save everybody. Well, that's not my question. <laughs> okay. First, we got to get us. All right. Totally that's the priority. We can help people after we have solved the That's problem. true. Sorry, that's, that's true. Not how my character works. Well, so on, the plus side, on the plus side, on the launch, so. you got 14.5 tons of cargo space. So, you know, as long as people don't mind bumping around a bit on takeoff. Well, that's fun. You can talk to them and hear all their stories while we're taking Thank God we were hauling that load of so. down pillows. Yeah. <laughs> so, can you, make the, uh, can you make the air raft hover? No. It it, no, no propulsion, just hover. I don't think it has power anymore. No, the 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 reactor is just sitting there shooting out a flame, <laughs> and that's it. Can we tap into our reactor? We have a reactor in the uh, snowplow. Can we you, power the you, grab? Yeah, you could. And I see had, what you're going we had for. Cables, so we could tow the thing right back because we have no freaking room. We've already stacked everything on the top of this thing. Listen. You're talking to a Marine. I have a very quick solution to this problem. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get sloppy. <laughs> yeah. And we got two more people that we're trying to take on here. Like. We only got four seats. We just shoot till the numbers match. That's yeah, my yeah. solution. Yeah, the air raft will see uh, the the driver plus five. So, well, all right. So we have the we have a solution. So I will investigate whether we can have. An Visa alternate Visa. solution to get this thing powered up so it at least floats, so we can drag it back. Because we have, to, yeah, we got to get these grab lifters back. So, the two of you go ahead and make another. Uh, both of you make an education plus mechanics check. Okay. Eight. Nine. Perfect. So, 
you're able to get this thing to hover and you've rigged up a tow line that is basically a chain with the uh, with an extension cable wrapped around it. <laughs> we're gonna have to travel very slow because there's not really any good braking system, and if we're well, that and the fact that the air and an air this is an open air air raft, so um, yeah, I so, think. But right the good news is now right we can right. seat people in the freaking air raft and not have to. I'm just saying. If I, you're going to take the kids, I'll ride on the air raft. I'm not sit inside. That it requires to survive minus hopeless. 30. Right? Yeah. And I know what you got to wear and, yeah, shit yeah, the, and how long you've got before whatever you're wearing just doesn't fucking matter. Right. It's just cold no matter what you're wearing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, I have a, a med kit built into my back suit, but I don't have an external one. So does that mean I can't use it to help with the guy's broken the, ribs? That is correct, but okay. Dr. Lash should probably have a med kit if he wants to try and wrap this guy's ribs. Yeah, I thought mine was automatic. I don't have a med kit. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> no. I think you some science on the what, what road. <laughs> I mean, you can, make, you can tear off a piece of cloth and make a just quietly choke him out while no one's looking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess his injuries were worse than yeah. that. <laughs> he didn't make it. They were more like yeah. that than I thought. Well, that broken rib actually punctured him. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take some twigs if we're finding them and just have those ice plants the ice bushes rips, um, never seen anybody uh, sanguinate from a broken off. ankle but it happens <laughs> 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 fit, not mine okay go ahead thing. and make a uh since you're using uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> you know garbage to try to fix this guy up Make a education plus medicine check, and it'll be a difficult check. So you want to get a ten or better. It's only first. Day. It's only first. Day. Uh, Thirteen. Oh, okay. So you're able to give him back three points of his health, uh, and he's feeling. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> he's feeling quite <laughs> a bit. Add some stuff. <laughs> Does a fifteen make anything better? Uh, he gets five points back. There you go. Okay. So, uh, I mean, he still has a hard time walking and breathing, but you've patched him up, and uh, he lays down in, in the back seat of the um, of the air air route that you're towing behind you. Um, now, before we go, we, we do need to address the uh, graboid that's here in the. So you don't see any more movement under the snow currently, but you can clearly at this point, now that you've seen it moving. You can see tracks, and this thing is like it's wide, like um, vehicle wide. Big yeah, wide. yeah. It could uh, it could wreck our day if we if we if that thing hits us. So describe how the wreck occurred. So we you know did, was it stupidity or did that thing get you? Uh, no, I I, I was driving and I was flying the air raft too fast and we were in a storm and I decided to push on through the snow blindness and I ran it into a snow drift. Ah, okay. At full speed. You people <laughs> dishonor the great empire of Sweden. <laughs> I wish you were not required for me to save your sorry asses but I must do this. Yeah, so the, these tracks that you're seeing of whatever this is under the snow and ice, um, it's at least 10 meters wide. Okay. Uh, let's see. We butchered up the uh, the snow sal the ice salamanders. Yeah, and we, you want to chum it? Is that what well, you're I was doing? Gonna, yeah, get it interested in some food. It's all jammed into the food processor now. We Just didn't have room. fetch with the kids. We could drag one of the kids. Here, kids, go get that ball. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, send the, send the know it all fourteen year old girl out. Hey, what do you think that is? <laughs> okay, quick, take off. <laughs> so once it's all attached, and we're, we're we'll take off at like you know five miles an hour, a, a brisk walking pace, while uh, ranged shooters stay up on top. Okay. Yeah. I'll aim. Or at least somewhere where we can watch this thing. All right. 
I'll use uh, the drone and look for any kind of sensor signal like uh, a change in snow elevation uh, or change in number of passengers sound or <laughs> anything like that uh, okay so, so I'm, I'm monitoring the uh, as you are driving away um, you travel for a good two hours at this slow pace um, Everybody, once again, make a recon check. Thirteen. Okay. Eleven for Fenris. So you two got it. Eight. You got it. Five. You didn't. Uh, Smith and Wesson. Six. You didn't. And Dr. Lash. <laughs> What'd you get for your recon check? Ten. Okay. So everybody except for Goose and uh, uh, Smith and Wesson, you can see that once again, you can see that there's something moving under the snow and it's coming right for you rather quickly. And this thing is like 12 meters wide, 12 to 15 meters wide, whatever is under the snow. And it busts up out of the snow. It looks like that. Hmm. All right. Oh, so I was aiming and I shoot it. <laughs> you were aiming. Oh. I was. I right. said I aim at it. All right. Um, oh, yeah. I do not. And, uh, all right. So the width of that is a vehicle. That right. means the length of it is uh, 100 feet or something. It's huge. Everybody roll initiative. We're going to see. Uh, uh, Smith and Wesson, what'd you get? What kind of roll? Initiative. Uh, eight. Okay. And Dr. Lash? Seven, eight. Eleven. Uh, Goose. Ten. Raph. Nine. <clears throat> Fenris. Twelve. Eight. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Lash, if you want, you can take um, uh, the shotgun from uh, Begil, since He's fucking worthless. Would you like a shotgun? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Hold on here. Do I know how to use this? Do you have gun combat slug? <laughs> no. Uh, Do I have gun combat any? No. <laughs> okay, so well, you're at a minus three to use it, which is why they give you but a I shotgun, you know? Just don't be behind anybody. Yeah, just shoot in the general <laughs> direction. So, a shotgun. Uh, are you ready for the specs of the shotgun? I can probably just pull it up on here. That's true. It's on uh, page 120. Is that Dr. Lash? Or Smith and Wesson that they don't know how to use a gun? No, it's Dr. Lash. Okay. I know, that would be irony, but... Yeah. Okay. Stop it. So, uh, Fenris, you can see this big giant uh, snow worm uh, coming up that is, you know, being all dude and shit, trying to be ready to attack <laughs> the ATV. You see my dib on top. Yes. I am going to shoot at it. Go for it. Ten hits. Uh, you can add two to your damage. That's five. So ten. 
20 damage. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. I have the uh, improved carbine, so. Nice. Yes. All right. Um, so I'm assuming that you're shooting from the roof of the ATV. Did you want to use a minor action to jump down, and, or do you want to stay where you're at? I'm going to jump down. Okay. All right. Dr. Lash, what would you like to do? Now, if you this use your minor action to aim, that gives you a plus one to your attack, which basically means that you would only be at a minus two since you're untrained. Yeah, let's do that. Does this... Are we, like, inside a thing with a roof and windows, or is it... Yeah, it's like you're you're inside like a, a motorhome. Alright. I'm gonna look out the window and Okay. It's like you're hunting deer in Arkansas. <laughs> so or Eastern the damage Oregon. for shotgun is four D. <laughs> it's universal. Yeah, shotguns do four D damage. And it has the bulky trait. Yes. Do I add any of my stats, or is it just so it'd be? Because I don't have. So it would thing. you would add your Dex modifier? Okay. And then a minus two. Nine. Wow, you hit. Uh, <laughs> and you can you can add one to your damage. Oh, they have the range for a shotgun listed as 50 meters. That seems like a pretty slug. good shotgun. Maybe. Yeah, or maybe it's using a slug. Yeah. yeah that's about right. You think so? Uh, 50 meters? That's, that's about the maximum. Well, about. I mean, at the maximum. at the end of the long range, it's gonna. Be, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you got a good choke on. You're it. gonna hit something. Yeah. Two of uh, my pellets ten. hit, but. What'd you get? Ten dabblage. Okay. That was actually a pretty good hit. All right. I'm going to duck back in. <laughs> <laughs> Goose, you're riding on top. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to shoot it a right. lot. A lot? Auto so you want, to, you want to set it up for auto fire? Yeah. No, you probably, I don't know that you want to use auto fire because. That's more for So here's how, here's how auto or automatic weapons work. So. You can do a single shot, which is what these guys are all doing. You can do a three shot burst, which means that you can add the, if you hit, you add the auto score to your damage automatically, plus whatever your effect is. If you do auto fire, so what's the auto rating on your rifle? Three. So that means that you could pick three targets oh. and and, sh and make an attack on each one of them. And um, walk between them. Right. Okay. So I just want to do a burst then, right? Yeah. Alright. Can I aim first? With auto? Uh, yeah, uh, with a burst? Technically, their rules state if you're doing uh, burst or auto fire, you cannot aim. Alright, fine. They're no fun. I know, right? 16. That's not a very good roll, though. That's only a 5? No. So that is a miss. Uh, okay. So much for hitting bombs. Right. Uh, did you want to do anything with your minor action? Curse. Oh, uh, or I mean, you could get down from being on top of the ATV. No. no. Okay. It's hard to swallow ATVs. That's true. So is there a turret on the ATV? No. Oh. Raph, what would you like to do? I'm gonna shoot at. Okay. So where are you? Are you inside the ATV or are you up on the roof? I imagine myself like just inside. Like, is there. You said there's a cargo area, so I imagine there being like a cargo door. Or yeah, like a roller door. Yeah, yeah, something like that. 
And I kind of imagine her kind of being on the inside of that and using just the inside of it as cover. Right. And then kind of like firing around to right. the outside edge of it, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of cover, the the that wall is going to give you a plus eight armor. So you would ignore the first eight points of damage or anything. Oh, I got a quick question. Did I remember to bring my cutlass? Probably. All right. I mean, you're a marine, yeah, so. We don't forget our cutlasses. Yeah, I doubt that. All right. Go ahead and make your All shot. Right. Did right. you want, with your minor action, did you want to aim first? Yeah. Okay, so you get a plus one to your attack. It's dexterity plus your gun combat energy. Nine. That hits. And you can add one to your damage. That was a plus one to hit with the aim too, right? Correct. Okay. But so the so it's average to hit, so it's eight, and you got a nine, which is one over, so that one goes to your damage. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Do I add my gun combat modifier to my damage too, or no? No. No. Okay. So I roll the four, and I get my one from the. Overage. So, nine so, damage. Yep. Alright. Pew pew. Okay. Bjorn. Come on. Well, we've been waiting for them to show up. Uh, so, I'm not sure who's driving this thing, but I say, evade! Because I don't want anything this size to crush our... Okay. Uh, so, you yell to uh, Smith and Wesson to do some evasion? <laughs> Just, yeah. Okay. Don't let it nice crush our vehicle okay. <laughs> and uh, shoot at it with my rifle. And I uh, hit, let's see, that's a 10, 11, 12, 13. Wow. So you can add a plus 5 to your damage. Holy crap. And it's wow. a 5D laser rifle. Yeah, laser rifles don't mess around. <laughs> so on the dice, I have. 20 on the dice. Jeez. And then you said I could add plus five. five. Oh, wait, I think I rolled my damage wrong because I only rolled two dice for my damage and it's supposed to be 3d plus three. Yeah. So, yeah, roll another d6 and we'll take it off. Yeah, one and then plus the three. So, so an, an extra four more damage. Okay. Sorry. So you did 25? Yeah. Okay. That laser rifle rocks. It's, yeah. The ammo is crazy expensive, but well, you can plug the ba you can plug the charge back in. I mean, it recharges like your phone. Oh, it has what magazines and happen? mag costs. Yeah. So well, know. a new mag costs that much, but I think isn't it like a hundred shots up one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> like it's rechargeable. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Smith and Wesson. So. Bjorn yells at you to take evasive action. Do you you can you have a couple of choices here. You could uh, floor it and try to get the ATV out of the way, which would be a drive check, or you could just say no and hit the brakes and take a shot. Yeah. Um. I'll floor it. Okay. Go ahead and make a um, dexterity plus. Drive wield check. Nine. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the <laughs> you guys in the ATV suddenly it's like brrr, and he takes off with this ATV and the worms like. Um, Do I need to make some kind of check to keep from falling off the back of it? Yeah. Go ahead and make it. So yeah, Raph, make a dexterity <laughs> check. <laughs> So on the top yeah, you're on the top, so you need to make a dex check as well. Alright. <coughs> Six for uh, Bjorn. Eight. Okay. Six. Uh oh. We're in the snow. Raph, <coughs> uh, what'd you get? Six. Yeah. So, Raph, you go flying out the back <coughs> and land in the snow. Uh, so do you. Um, Nice See, you should, you're glad. Well, you're probably Fenris, glad you got out now. Fenris has been standing in the snow. Yeah. yeah. 
He's, yeah, now he has no cover because the ATV took off and he was hiding well, by we it. Well, we were moving when the thing came, right? Right. Yeah, so it's... <laughs> so the worm is going to make an attack on the ATV. Ah, no! Which is still towing the we need air to around, this right? Planet. <laughs> oh, you mean lunch? Yeah, it's still towing lunch. Even if we kill, <laughs> even if we kill this thing and it breaks the sled, we're toast. Luckily, it has melee zero. <laughs> so I imagine the ATV kind of flying this thing like a kite behind it. Is that basically kind of what's going yeah? On? And it just hit the air raft. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <coughs> there goes our ticket to get off this planet. And somehow it only does 22 points of damage with 8D uh, damage dice. Because um, I rolled really bad. Uh, the air raft is just... It, this Slam. thing comes down and slams the air raft. And, and the air raft is digging through the snow and comes up the other side. However, um, Egil uh, was in the back of the air raft and is now dead and paced. Well, the wife or the kid? No, that was the man with the broken ribs that yeah. he wanted to put out of his misery. He was already paced. <laughs> Your spare parts, buddy. <laughs> In the Arctic with a sucking <laughs> chest wound. Yeah. Uh, Fenris. We will have eagle jerky tonight. <laughs> Fenris, what would you like to do? So I'm going to attempt to attack. Wait, as my minor action, I'm going to aim at the worm. Okay. And then I'm going to attack it. Okay. <coughs> That's pretty good. That's 14. That a 14 to hit? Yeah. Yeah. So you can add, that is a critical hit and you can add uh, six to your so be a total plus nine damage. Yeah. Try that calamari. 19, 20, 23. 23 damage. 23 damage. So. I like this weapon a lot. With a critical hit. Come right here. Huh? That's, my that's the laser uh, carbine going off. Oh, oh. Where is it? Hold on. Plasma cannon. Hmm. Here we go. Uh, roll 1d6. Four. So, the worm now has a very bad scar just burning scar across it where you raked it with your laser carbine. Um, Dr. Lash, you're trundling around inside the uh, the ATV. What would you like to do? Can I see the swarm still? Yes. A little scary thing. I'm going to focus on it. Like, really focus on it. Okay. An intense and stare, if you will. A scaring kind of. Using my slept stay, I'm going to assault it. Okay. Go ahead and make your roll. So, for that, you would roll 2d6, add your PSI modifier, and you want to get, uh, let's see here, for assault. So, 
Wow, this is a difficult check, so you got to get a 14 or better. <laughs> And I'm only using my side? Yes. There's no intellect or anything added? Or I suppose you could add your intellect to it. Alright. Really? Now you want to betray me? You show those dice was boss. <laughs> Eight. Eight. <laughs> um, the worm gets a minor ice cream headache and like looks at the ATV. Um, oh, crap. We're going to be walking back. Goose. What do you want to do? Draw my cutlass and charge the beast. <laughs> charge it with your cutlass. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it's big enough that your minor action can get you into melee. Okay. Go ahead and uh, make a dick, er, strength plus uh, melee blade. Uh, 11. Yeah. Alright. So you can have 3 to your damage. Nice. Okay. 11. Okay. All right, and now you are standing right next to the worm, mm -hmm. which may not be where you want to be. Uh, Raph, what would you like to do? Well, I reckon I'm prone in the snow. Yes. So I'll take my minor action to stand up. Okay. And uh, we'll shoot at it again. Okay. <clears throat> Dexter plus gun combat. 11. That hits. You can add three to your damage. Three to damage. Nineteen. Nice. Okay. Uh, Bjorn. You're all right, I got your down. Your you know, prone in the snow. Here is this thing, and, and I lost my rifle into the snow. It went okay. <laughs> so I did roll to see if I could land at least be crouched and not like on my face. Right. So I got that going for me. So I use one minor action to pull my <laughs> chain drive sword and yank the starter on it. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you don't have to pull a starter. I mean, it's all electric. You just draw your sword. You can, and then I charge the thing. And if I can get to it, great. If I can't, yeah, you can get to it, but you won't be able to attack the starter. Okay. okay. So I'm charging it with my chain drive sword. <laughs> <laughs> Smith and Wesson, what would you like to do driving the vehicle? Do you want to <laughs> turn around? Turn around and come back, or? Serpentine? What do you want to do? Do you see us in the rear view? Or? <laughs> yeah. Look at the rear view mirror. Oh, shit. <laughs> We've lost almost um, half the cargo. And who's uh, that smeared all over the back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the wind, Why the is the air raft red? The back windshield wipers going. <laughs> 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 I, I, guess, I guess I'll have to turn around. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a drive check. Four. Four. Oh, oh crud. <laughs> okay, the worm. Oh, how the worm is turned. Is going to attempt. Actually, I think the worm's probably more concerned about the fact that it just got slashed by a sword. Um, it's going to attempt to. What the to... fuck is this? <laughs> 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 is that a fucking sword? Yeah. <laughs> Who the you think you are <laughs> and somehow it misses you with a four God and this thing comes down and like literally its whole body goes bam and the ground shakes mm -hmm. and big powder a puff of powdered snow comes That's up right. and it rears back up but it misses you how, uh, how tall are we looking at here again uh 25 meters long so it's probably at least 15 meters high Daddy said, "You gotta be smart or be tough," and I can't read a book. So here we go. <laughs> Fenris, what would I, you like to do? I'm going to try to aim. Okay. 
and then make an attack. All right, plus one to hit. Ooh, that's five, plus two, plus two. So that's nine to hit. Plus one, so ten. I already added the plus oh, one. Oh, okay. So would that still hit? So nine still hits. Uh, okay. You can add plus. You can add a plus one to your damage. Okay. Eighteen damage. Ouch. All right, the worm is not looking good. It's getting oh, like these said. weird burn marks. He doesn't know where these burns are coming <laughs> from. Just oh, burns. Doctor Lash, you are uh, being trounced around inside the uh, ATV because uh, he didn't roll so well driving. Uh, you, if you want to try to hit the worm, you're going to be at. You have to make a ten or better because it's now difficult. I'm going to start focusing again. Okay. <laughs> Plus try again. Make real hard. Yeah. He's just staring at it, getting the nose Burst bleed. into flames. Yeah. Burst into flames. <laughs> Burst into flames. Scanners. <laughs> Yeah, the arm explodes. <laughs> no. What'd you get? Twelve. That was close. Um, but the but the worm is like worm seems agitated now because it wasn't agitated before, but it seems like really irritated now. Uh, Goose, what would you like to do? Cotton. All right. I knew I shouldn't have skipped that day. We covered worm psychology. In <laughs> And right? Worm training. <laughs> That's the new Disney movie. How to train your worm. Ten. Uh, yeah. So you can add two to your damage. All right. Mm. Uh, eight. Okay. And through its armor. Raph. What would you like to do? Oh, I'm going to sight it down this time, take aim. Okay, plus one to your attack. Eight. Eight? Mm -hmm. That hits. <clears throat> uh, no bonus to damage, but you did hit. You did 13? That's exactly how many you had left. Nice. And Raph shoots the worm and kills it. I don't care. I'm still digging that chainsword into it. <laughs> you're <still cutting> pieces <laughs> out. Like, like you're carving out pieces of a whale that you just yeah. caught. Yeah, make sure it doesn't get back up again. Okay. Uh, we will pick this up next week. Uh, with the rest of the journey home and your newly painted era. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such fresh paint. Fresh paint. Well, one hundred percent all natural. Yes. Organic paint. I just like the visual of the the back of the uh, ATV goes with red, and then the windshield wiper goes. I just want to paint my silence snow pistol red and white and mark it with a red cross and call it a medical <laughs> yeah, yeah, call, call it the first aid. Yeah, first aid. The bandager. The bandager. Ah. Oh, snowworms. Snowworms. Silly snowworms. We forgot to walk without a rhythm.